somebody mentioned about the issue of uh, our commissioners being people who have a moral upstanding and people who can be counted on to give us deliberate and good results. Because we don't know if we put somebody there. We can keep on talking about how we commissioners, but we don't just want anybody in that position. We want somebody who's actually worthy, who can do a good job, who's going to go there, and regardless of how much money somebody draws at them, they can give us good results. And now, I'd like to speak about police being held what they uh, there's a uh, uh, yes, yes, there is a very big problem in the world. Maybe if you can take over, then maybe we'll come back later when the mic is okay. Ephraim. Sadly, hi, hi, Kim. Hello. I hope you can hear me. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, Ephraim, okay, you can go first. Ephraim, you can take over, please. Kind. Ephraim. Can you hear me? Hello? Kimuzi? Am I audible? We can hear you. Okay, thank you so much for this space. Uh, well, uh, I was saying, <coughs> I think mine will be a little bit brief, but first of all, condolences to those people who lost their lives through the shooting by the police. Condolences to the family. I mean, it was so sad losing these heroes in this fight. Okay, guys, I think we need to understand the complexity of the problem that we are facing right now. The problem, I think, is beyond Ruto, simply because I think we are dealing with a problem which is a deep-rooted systemic problem. That is to say, like, we have Ruto who is a mess, he is a liar, a very bad trait for a leader. We have the parliament, which is basically like a puppet. We have a part of the judiciary. We have the police, which are now even worse. Then corruption is a big elephant, which now drives across all these institutions. So guys, I think we also need to be uh, a bit realistic. Uh, Ruto is not one guy who can wake up one day and say, I resign. And if he does so, and maybe we have that uh, IBC, and elections are held in the next maybe 90 or whatever days, let's be honest, Kenyans, we're still going to uh, have leaders, or maybe the same or majority of the same politicians who are also part of the systemic problem. My suggestion is this. I think we need to use a different approach, as in let's focus on cleaning up the system, as in total cleanup. And we should focus our energy on parliament because I think that is the main house or the, 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 uh, the place where we lose all these battles. That is where we can be able to tame this corruption. That is where we can have institutions being accountable. That is the main area where we can we can communicate to it directly and have things done according to our way as the people. So my opinion would be, we need to focus on two things because I see today's theme is uh, focusing on immediate things that can be done. Number one, I think we need to fight uh, or rather get fight for justice for those people who lost their lives in the streets. And by saying this, I mean, we can collect evidence. We know the cops who are involved in this. We can uh, uh, pick up two or three and have them uh, charged in a, in a court. And I'm sure we can get support from lawyers and support from LSK and many other people who may be 
of uh, the same the, the same uh, common goal. And uh, this case can also help us to continue now showing our presence or our fight online and uh, offline towards having justice for these people who we lost in the streets. Number two, I also think we need to uh, recall the 204 MPs. I'm sure you guys have seen they have started the resurfacing now showing Kenyans the middle finger. I mean, why did we even lose this from the beginning? Why have we not initiated the process of recalling this, uh, these guys? We already have, I think it is Kabete constituency where they are recalling their MP. And those guys are ahead of the game. They have already started. They have printed the books. They have uh, visited the churches. They are going to all social. Uh, I think they call the, uh, there is a word they call mitaani uko where they are placing people and, uh, and uh, putting their, themselves together in collecting these uh, signatures and details. And there is a lawyer who was in this space, I think either this space or another one, who explained it very well, that recalling an MP is not something that is complex. We basically just need to collect the signatures and the details. We collect 50 plus one, that is the majority of every word that voted for that particular MP. Then we raise a petition through the IABC. It doesn't matter whether we have a chairman of the IABC or not. We already have a secretary who are given the responsibility of processing these petitions. And the work becomes easier because this petition now, when it leaves IABC, it goes straight to the speaker, where it shows that the people of this area, they have said you were not able to serve them according to, what the, uh, to their wishes. And that basically means that guy, I think, I don't know how it goes now beyond that, but it is just a, a, a simple thing. Though it involves a lot of work, uh, the nitty gritties and the uh, uh, whole value of going all around collecting all these details, but it is achievable. If we could pick up these two things, I'm sure we can maintain the momentum that we may need to keep on pushing on for better governance of this country. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, Ephraim. Uh, thank you for your input. Uh, you can mute your mic. Maybe we give next to a lady, maybe Sally, because she has been raising her hand up. Then Sally, then next Sally. Uh, okay, thank you so much. Uh, I hope you can hear me. <clears throat> uh, so, hi, everyone. Thank you so much, Kimu Kimuzi. I don't know why I keep on calling you Kimuzi. Kimuzi for hosting this space. And um, yeah, so uh, first of all, of course, my condolences to the families, the friends, the loved ones of all those who've lost, who've lost their lives uh, in this fight. Uh, our prayers are with you. And uh, yeah, we hope that God will see you through these um, trying times. Secondly, uh, of course, as a young person, I'm very proud of my country at this moment. Uh, and much as whatever is happening right now is very mentally and emotionally draining, because honestly speaking, I did not ever envision a time in my life where I would log on to uh, X or Twitter, or whatever you call it, and find you know images of people my age who have been killed, who have been shot uh, in the name of fighting for our country. So it is emotionally draining. It is mentally draining, but we cannot give up. Giving up is not a choice. We can't take mental breaks because, again, it's 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 not easy, but we cannot give up. Now, uh, moving on to our point, what you're talking about today, uh, the next immediate measures. So I've seen people talking about uh, the low-hanging fruits that we have. That means the things that we have uh, at hand, like the easiest uh, reach, uh, the, the things we can easily like reach for. And I remember at the beginning of this fight, when this thing just started online, we were telling ourselves that our greatest weapons are our phones and the internet. I feel like we can still take advantage of those instead of uh, maybe we are we are going for things that maybe are still like far, like are still quite out of reach. But what we have currently are our phones and the internet. And how can we use this? uh to realize to still keep on realizing our our dreams and goals and to still keep on winning this this fight number one we saw 
uh, during Thursday's demonstrations that uh, the goons were hired. And these goons are not old people. These goons are not like the older generation. How a goon or these goons that were hired are our age mates, like Nimayu Shuka Masisi. So much as I may be sounding like the devil's advocate here, but uh, I, I would like to see them not as our enemies, but as people who just saw an opportunity to get quick money and went for it. The people who are sort of mentally enslaved to these politicians. So uh, by using our phones and internet, we can maybe do things like uh, making graphics. I've seen people really make make really, really nice graphics, like graphics that sort of discourage these people against accepting small, small money from these politicians to remind them that you are doing those pathetic jobs because these politicians have taken away your opportunities from you. These graphics can be in Sheng, can be in Swahili, can be in English, as in a language that these that they can easily understand. If you can make such graphics, and at the end of the day, our another weapon that we have is our numbers. We are many, Sisindo Wengi Kuashinda. So if we are able to get as many of us as possible into this movement, including those goons or those let me not call them goons, let me just call them those youth or young men, and I don't know if women were among them, but maybe young men and women who are easily bought to go and do those bad things. If we can convince them to take the money, yes, but don't do it. You don't have to do what they tell you to do. You can take their money because, I mean, they're the ones offering, but you don't have to do what they're telling you to do. Then we can really, really uh, make some steps with some of the simple things that we have at hand. Another thing is we need to uh, infiltrate our family groups. You see those posters that we are making, do not be afraid. I mean, those posters that, for example, the ones that showed how much money like someone stole and how much it can do, do not be afraid to share those posters, even in your nuclear family groups. Like, no matter how small your family group is, share it. I don't know whether it would be appropriate to share those in church groups, but if you can, 100% share them so that these our these people can know. I remember yesterday, I think was it in Kericho, people went and put back up that wheelbarrow thing. You see, that shows the amount of mental slavery that we still have to fight. Yes, we are fighting for IBC to be reconstituted. Yes, we are fighting to recall our MPs. Yes, we are fighting all these things. But there's still a lot of mental slavery in our country. And that is what we really, as we work uh, towards these tangible things, we really need to also work to liberate those people so that when it comes to the time for an election, when it comes to the time for whether it will be in the next 90 days or in 2027, whichever time an election will come, we will have liberated these this people. We will have numbers, number one. We will have the numbers. Because size, the only, honestly speaking, it's only like maybe the youths who are who have been exposed to some of these things that we know root of for the evil that it is. But for some of our age mates who do not have sort of the, how do I put it, the level of, I don't want to say it, education. I don't know you, but you people get what I'm saying, right? I hope you do. They don't, they don't have like that level. They won't see it. They're still mentally, you know, tied to these politicians. So we need to find ways of re releasing them from the shackles of mental slavery that they're on. Another thing is civic education. I saw Mushiri. Mushiri did, did really, really well uh, by translating the finance bill in mother tongue, different, uh, you know, uh, vernacular languages. If we, go, we, if we could scale that up to do that to the constitution, again, our phones and our and the internet, recording reels on TikTok, recording reels on Instagram doesn't really take long. Someone can just choose a clause of the uh, some clause or article of the constitution and explain it in their language. Those ones again, we share them in our family groups so that they know that okay, this is what the constitution says, and this is our right, and this is what this person has done. And right now, what they another another point. Um, right now, the things we have seen on the internet, the way this guy spoke uh, that day that she was really really mad. The one that we actually know that's the real him. I mean, by this guy named Ruto, by the way, that day that we saw that, like, that's the real him, the things he said, the things he did, the photos we have on the internet, the videos we have of, of police killing us and beating us up and shooting us and arresting us, that is our evidence. That is what we have. So that the, the time the next election comes, we put even more focus 
on much as we are we will be campaigning for our candidate of choice at that time we also put more focus on campaigning against this this guy remember again uh this Rufo is a very smart guy right we all know that he's a very smart politician and he does not mind playing dirty so if he doesn't mind playing dirty then we should also beat him at his own game i mean we can also play dirty but playing dirty does not necessarily mean breaking the law we can find ways of playing dirty by not necessarily uh, uh breaking the law if if it's campaigning against him you know the way uh, i see nani does this guy is itumbi the way itumbi does itumbi does a lot of can spreading can of propaganda can we, can we wind up because Sorry. we have so many speakers yeah yeah this is my last point if you can like beat them at their own game by spreading propaganda but not like the bad kind like the good kind of propaganda so that people know so yeah thank you that's my point thank you thank you so much uh silent x then endoro Sally. Yes, uh, thank you very much uh, for granting me this opportunity to actually speak my prologue, so to say. This system, this government has actually taken away my family, your families, uh, hopes for ever being uh, like achievers, hopes for development. Uh, this current regime promised us uh, quite a lot of things so to say, in businesses, in jobs, uh, ease of uh, like our livelihoods, but at the long run, it actually ascertains that Africa actually kills her own sons. To be in particular, I would say Kenya kills her own sons and daughters, just at the expense of just mere ambitions, being, e being egocentric, with all due honesty, I think, yes, literally Kenya is killing its own son in its own son in each context. Because yes, we do have we have we do have ambitions, we do have aspirations in life. Uh I would like to also get a like a decent uh, living. I mean, uh I would like I'm looking forward to my own future. And here the government won't realize that the only way we, we can only come out of this pred uh, predicament is actually struggling to survive. We can mm. come out of all this when the government actually just hears us as a, as a, as a quick solution. Hears us, uh, it, do, it does away with all this uh, institutional capture. It has, it has its tentacles all over the place the judiciary the police uh even 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 uh, our own institutions the youth institution uh in the in the government have also been captured so how mm -hmm. how can we trust them so even the guys purporting that they are their own leaders actually they are betrayers they have betrayed us so we as the gen z quote unquote we are basically fighting or we are just protecting for what we know it's truly ours. Now, by the way, Gavar to is key. I'm sure I'll call up platform. Because we are we are out on those streets because we are we are actually fighting for our own freedom, our own jobs, basically our own hope. We just want that that mere hope that you are clinging on is what is taking us out there. But to me quite peaceful all this time. Now Gava Pia at our in your acknowledge. They have never seen such thing as that. But always go to a claim here at the same time. Yes, we are we are people. But at the same time, you guys, the government, you keep on undermining us. You keep on you don't, you don't want to hear us out. You're claiming you you want you are you are you are taking care of our needs, but in actual sense, you are you are eating us up. But we that to some of our history books at your Kenya at some point to look uh, in the likes of Singapore. Why can't we ourselves actually create those uh, like those history for for ourselves? And that is the starting point. Gavapia Irudishe, its focus. E Vision 2030. Now it's a facade. We seem to to have been losing a lot of focus. It seems so far fetched for us. If I talk come on Gen Z, see when you're into to create more of overseers, 
overseers as in nini overseers overseers that ukisema mara nyingi inakuja more of being officers and we shall take accountability to the end kama if at all it is in those leaders yes we shall if at all tutatumia our own expertise we in it we in law to break down these 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 laws for for our fellow kenyans we as teachers tutazifundisha kwa watu hata watu wa mje hii eh tutabonga tu kwa site medics wanatusaidia pia as we we as kenyans e emblem ime come as kenyans so mtu ana kama na uliza okay we have our own leader no we don't it's it is just a simple no we don't have any leader do you know what what is guiding us so our own lead ama nini what is our own lead at the, at the moment it is actually our own passion like say to the all of us to, we are resonating uh, so well with jamaa unaona yes what jamaa umeka base mtaani actually those things our visions yani to our hope of ever being developed sale sale kindly let's check on time kindly sure but basically if at all it is more uh, like proposals that we are actually want from this current regime first of all we demand for the cabinet to dissolve kabisa kabisa we don't want reshuffles at take you all in tourists you are like happy all of those all of those guys were told to doesn't matter wal invest mm. in sangapi hapo ndani doesn't matter police wa peo independence yao they've been captured judiciary pia the same thing they have been captured we take up easy roles pia sisi hata kama on ma senators we don't need those roles these roles roles is we don't need them actually we can hold these guys into account i mean into account i was born in this country this society ni ours tutaendelea kuifuatia for and that's the basic point for all of us thank you guys ndoro ndoro you can go next and uh, kindly keep the time just limit yourself to three minutes because there are so many people that want to talk here so let's give each and every person time uh, kindly just highlight your issue in a very articulate manner and uh, we shall pick because we are trying to see the issues that we have uh, raised many people have said reconstitute the ibc others is dissolve the cabinet not reshuffle let's continue ndoro uh thank you so much kimuzi uh everyone in the audience uh i would also like to thank all the protesters who've been showing up uh on the tuesday and thursday marches uh for making your voices heard uh i personally do not take it for granted and let us not forget uh all our brothers and sisters who have in one way or, in one way or another uh fallen by the wayside as a result of the brutality uh in the response from our government I'd also like to thank the, all the lawyers who stood by us who went uh for uh, our guys who had been caught and negotiated uh, their releases to everyone who has been supporting us online both locally and internationally we see you and we do appreciate you very much so one thing that I would like to bring to all of our attention is that what we see on the ground uh the government uh and the hand that it is playing in uh, the situation that we are in as a country uh, right now is at the tip of the iceberg so to say um all this financial instability because that is what is going to result from all this chaos is as a result of a global economy that is deeply flawed and to understand where it all started we, i'm going to have to highlight uh, a conflict that started all the way back in 1971 I don't know how many of you in the audience are aware of uh the gold standard and how the global economy and the national currencies of the world are pegged to each other in value. So to highlight that a long time ago right after World War 2 that is uh in 1971 there oh sorry that was way before that. Uh right after World War 2 all the nation states of the world gathered in the united states to come up with a de facto system that would regulate the world economy and that was when the us dollar was pegged to gold and every other currency in the world was pegged to the us currency 
And that system had its merits in the sense that it prevented countries uh, from devaluing themselves by printing too much money or abusing the, the, the economic powers in a way that would destabilize the entire system. But when the United States was given the, the lead to be the, to be the base uh, you know, currency for the entire, for the entire economic system, they misused that power. Uh, if you remember correctly, that is the period when the United States had a very huge economic boom. They would even go as far as putting people on the, on the moon. And that is what caused other countries, especially France, to be cautious as to the, mishan mis to the misuse of the power that the United States have been, had been given as a de facto currency of the world. So famously, the French sent a boat to the U.S. to collect their gold back, the, the gold that they had deposited in the U.S., uh, so that it could act as their, uh, you know, Nikama uh, reservoir. Yeah, let me say that reservoir. So they went to ask it back, fearing that the, U the United States was printing more money than was economically allowed uh, in the system that they had just passed. And because President Nixon at the time was aware that this was exactly what was happening. President Nixon, back in 1971, decoupled the dollar from, from the gold standard, which made all currencies in the world pegged to nothing. So as it stands today, the United States has the ability to print as much money as it wants. And the only thing that that ever does is to even more so destabilize not only their economy, but our economy and the economies of the world. So the thing, the way it affects us as Kenya today is that when we look to the East and we look to the West, notice that when the Chinese offered us economic support, they not only sent money, but they sent their workers to build ports, to build roads and to build railway stations. But when the United States, uh, if your memory is, will serve you just a few weeks ago, when they send help, they send IMF, they send uh, suppressive bills that will not only make life hard for the normal citizen, but even that money itself does not make it its way to the ground. I am not making this statement to some to make you aware of my preference. No, this is not a personal preference. This is just a statement of facts that the real problem that we need to address is the the structure of our economic system. Shall it be, shall, shall, shall we continue to be the dump site for a system that has already continued to fail, not only itself, but a system that, if you can remember the 2008 housing crisis, uh, the European debt crisis, all of these had their root causes in the US financial structure and Wall Street and IMF and, and all these other US based institutions had their role to play in that. And you would have to note that over the past few months, the tone of the president towards the dollar had just shifted. A few months ago, he was cautioning people about holding the dollar. And now today he, he's out there signing deals with them. So be cautious. And I think the one solution that we can have is to turn our economy, not to rely so much on these people. Let us not rely on these politicians to build our roads or to improve our schools or to you know, build hospitals. It is very possible for the Kenyan people through their own work to, to build institutions and companies and financial bodies that can do this for us. Because at the end of the day, if we build our schools, if we build our hospitals, it is us who gain, it is our children who gain. So I really hope that at the end of the day, we appreciate the fact that yes, they might put us in this economic, uh, let me even call it a, a shithole, sorry. But at the end of the day, it is our responsibility to find solutions beyond our passionate expressions of a disdain and distrust. It is up to us to build the companies and the institutions that, even, even if they're not in government, because even the work of the government is to create policies that govern the way the country runs. But it is for us to use those policies and take up the role as the hands that, that actually push those uh, so to say cuts, we are the ones who are going to build those roads. We're the ones who are going to start those companies. We're the ones who are going to 
take books to those schools. We are the ones who are going to become teachers, founders, CEOs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I do hope that later on today, you shall we shall all recollect. What can I do? Do I have a project I wish I could do? Do I have a company that is in the back, is in the back, you know, in my notebook somewhere? E attention yen to make what to create, and I've loved the passion that we have. I would like us to now look at ourselves. What can we do now? What things can we build today that can earn us as a community? Because that is what we are right now. What what projects can we start now that are not uh, ideally for charity? And I do appreciate uh, the many efforts that I've seen going around to help people who have been injured and all the families who have been bereft. Let, let off next steps now be about building. What can we do to make the future brighter instead of uh, only uh, soothing the wounds of today? And let us focus on that. The more we do that, the more we can offset the economical imbalances created by the impunity of these leaders and the more and the more capable we will be to even cause changes therein because they will not listen to us uh, if we continue to be jobless but we can create jobs for ourselves and we can become profitable institutions and then we can cause the change and that will be even easier and that effect will only compound so thank you kimuzi and i do appreciate the chance to share this with you Thank you. Uh, thank you for the input. Uh, maybe next a lady I have a D, then uh, Franklin, who is raising his hand. Hey, thank you, Kimuzi, for the chance to speak. And to everybody who is listening, Abarizenu. And I'm um, passing my condolences to the families who lost their loved ones. Those were our brave soldiers. So now to end straight to the point, the topic is the next immediate measures the government must take. So I'm thinking that, uh, guys, we have a list that Kunaili Silkina Toka anonymously that was circulating around So I think that list had uh, clear things on what we really wanted. So what we need to do, kwa hiyo list, mm, all those action plans, we need to reshuffle to do a gani ni priority. Like every speaker coming here is talking of IBC reconstitution. So definitely that one is uh, number one. Number two is dissolving the cabinet at Utaki Mananaku reshuffle because all those are incompetent leaders, but wanapele kwa kwa other cabinets to do the same uh, mediocre work they've been doing. So number three, scrap and constitutional position. So now try to kusema that that list that was circulating around that is written our, what is the list? Uh, our non-negotiable demands to dictate a route and whatever. So we need to see what ninini tunatua kwa hii list and what is our priority kwa hii list because what we are doing, all these spaces, nimekwa nikizisikiza every day, I've never gotten a chance to speak while Leon and Mepata. And everybody is always repeating behind me they're likely to say the same things and all these things list so we need to have what is our priority priority nigani and then I wanted to add that all these movements Ilias are online and uh, we are turning down and up and your governor to Shikia. So we need to continue putting the pressure that we had. Something like Kusalimiana strategy, that strategy has really worked. So I to fight back down, if there is a corrupt leader, this is what I need to Kim Salimia. This is a point that uh, I think Speaker Mungina Longia Mapema, she's called Patricia. So I think I'm seconding that, that we need to continue with that. Iyo ili work sana. And then there's this one that I also saw somebody posted that uh, all these projects that politicians want to and they put their names. So tunafaku, we go with and spray paint or something. We just write their taxpayers' money. Kubwa. So kama like ile nye niliona wavinyandete ya maindika po sujuinini. All those things. We just go and write big taxpayers' money. So easy v2. Ini kama tutakua tunakua na some, um, some strike but we are not going on the streets because happened I think Gava a little bit when we were on the streets and then they infil infiltrated us later goons. Also, another thing, when these things happen, I think uh kwa tuna back down Kidogo and see the next uh the next move. Yo they they are kwanza Vilanifa and Cairo, they say they are backing down. I was also against it, but Nika Kuzakukachi Nikufikiria, they were um, 
maybe the mode of conveying that thing they weren't clear so we all of us thought that they've been bought but unona kitinafanyika whether they were bought or not the truth to that i don't know but what what i think they they were trying to say is we back down from what i've gotten is that to get back down and to one because that is where ruto a little bit a little bit a little bit when we were saying uh we are still going on the streets and before he had already said that we are criminals so you see he brought real criminals now to justify that and thanks to god that all business owners were merudi back to our side they're saying that or oh, our protests were infiltrated so i think with all these uh, strategies that we have kama kitu inafanyika we just don't go with our chest out with kama tulikuwa tusha decide kitu we can back down and always think and alafu about having leaders that one is a very bad idea and we should not support it we love leaders at some point but we are still at a young stage as a movement and tunafa kuendelea so kwa hiyo kitu chote nimesema to make a summary the list that we were we, were, we had and they were making rounds so at least the endele kukuja what you were doing before it worked the only thing that didn't work was going on the streets kwa sababu gava ilipata a way of infiltrating us so thank you so much for the opportunity nimemaliza okay uh thank you so much uh for this opportunity that you have given me this morning so i just have uh four highlighters that